Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna be covering server-side template injection. This has to be one of the easiest vulnerabilities in the world to test for. And so I think it's one that you will want to know. And I decided to make a video about server-side template injection or SSTI because I have seen it pop up several times in the last month on different CTFs. They're on Port Swigger, Hack the Box has several of them, Try Hack Me has walkthroughs on these. And so I thought I would go ahead and make a video on it because they're becoming more and more popular in the world of CTFs. I think in the real world, they're really not that popular. If you go check the Hacktivity, there are some server-side template injections on there, but there are not a lot. And the thing about the server-side template injection is because the code is being executed on the server they're always going to be high or critical bugs so they're going to be really high paying if you want to check for them but in this video we're not going to be covering the code that actually causes the server side template injection i'm just going to be showing you the payloads in order to check for them and it's really simple and then how you'd go from a proof of concept to actually getting remote code execution on a server just in case you come across it in some kind of ctf and you need to get remote code execution on the box so with that let's go ahead and jump into it all right so here we are at hack the box and the way we're going to find this challenge is we can come right in here and just click challenges web and then scroll all the way to the bottom as soon as it loads and it is the second to last one right here called the spookifier you can go ahead and open this up and you don't even need to connect to your vpn and you will just hit start and it will launch the instance for you you can copy the IP address, paste it in up here, and we can go to the lab. So right here we are, we just have this text and no matter what we enter in here, so if we enter our name and hit Spookify, we get this little grid back. And this is really interesting because what we're gonna be looking for is the server side template injection. And this seems to be spitting out for us some kind of pre-built template and some of the information that I'm gonna be going over is inside this zip file right here. So if you downloaded this and looked at it, you can actually look at the code for this challenge. But I'm gonna show you how to get around this as if we didn't have this file. So here we are, and a lot of times, like if I was doing this blind, the first thing I would check for is a cross-site scripting, and then some other payloads that you can stick in here, maybe run SQL map against this, but that is not going to be the point of this specific challenge. What we're looking at is a server-side template injection, and so these are really simple to test for. So we'll come up to Google and just type in hack tricks SSTI and we can just click this first one right here and we don't have to scroll down very far to hit the information that we want this is really this simple to test what I would recommend you do is just copy these one at a time and paste it in and see what happens and it doesn't do anything for us we just get what we put back and then copy the next one and paste it in and see what happens. And right here, we see it executed the code for us, which means we have server-side in template injection. And so now we know that this payload right here works. And I think this one right here is Ruby. I don't remember what this one is. I just did a CTF not too long ago that actually had this one as the vulnerability that led to a code execution. But we can actually find what program is running by this little template right here. So if we run something like this, then we'll see that we're running this Mako right here. And it is a Python library, and it will tell us how to exploit what we need from this right here. If you downloaded the zip file, you actually see that you're running Mako, but we can go through and run this. So we ran this and it works. So we can come and run something like this. We're gonna see that it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip to this right here. So what we would do is just type in something like we saw. So we would have the quotes, and we can say Z, and then it was a dot join, and we're joining it to, and then we can say like an R. Okay, so I misspelled the word join. I actually typed in John, and so I skipped over me troubleshooting the fact that I spelled something wrong and went ahead and gave you the proper payload. So if we run this right here, we will get our three letters joined down here, which tells us we're running Mako. And so if we were trying to get code execution on this, what I would do is I would go right back to Google and I would Google for Python Mako 
remote code execution through a server-side template injection. I'm not actually gonna walk you through that, but that is how you would go about doing this. If you were doing this for a bug bounty program, the dollar sign and the times seven times seven will be plenty for you to approve as a proof of concept, and this would be all you would need. You wouldn't actually try to get code execution unless you were actually on some kind of penetration testing engagement. So in the case of this specific lab, if you open up the file over here, it tells you where the root flag is actually located. We can actually get that root flag by typing in a dollar sign, curly brace, and then we say open, and we want it to open a very specific file, and it is back one directory, and it is called flag.txt. We close this off, and then we need it to read, and we're gonna call it the Python function of read, and then close this off and it should give us our flag and i had a typo so we'll try this again and there is the flag so that is how you did this lab so that is the server side template injection and as i promised it is a really simple bug you can just copy those payloads paste them in all over the place and see if the code gets executed anywhere on the server where you're able to input information and that brings us to the end of the video thanks for watching